Senator Worth, we are here at the Capitol today to talk about education. I'm hoping you can give us a big picture here. Tell us how do all these different education proposals fit together into one plan? So I'm happy to. It's, it's super exciting uh, to finally have education at the top of the list. We've always been concerned about it, but we've been just struggling. After 10 years of not having revenues and cuts and brutal hits to our teachers, we're finally in a position to be able to make a huge difference. And this is the moonshot that you've heard our governor talk about. And I'm incredibly encouraged by all the work that's gone on with the education leaders and the finance leaders. And here we are. Uh, we have two large pieces of legislation that contain most of the, the, the parts of education reform. Senate Bill 1, carried by Senator Stewart, Senator Souls, and Senator Kernan, bipartisan. And then House Bill 5, which is a similar mirror bill. Uh, so they're not, there's a few little differences and they're going to get lined up as they move across. And these contain substantive policy changes and also funding. What makes me happy as the majority leader here in this chamber is when our education people uh, look through that budget and say, wow, uh, everything we're looking for is in there. Uh, and so now it's a question of getting these two bills, Senate Bill 1 and House Bill 5, up to the governor. And of course, passing the budget, one of our biggest priorities. And if we can get that done, which I think we can, then you know the rocket is lifted and this moonshot's going to happen. We have plenty of oil and gas money coming in to pay for these proposals now, but does the long-term success of these ideas depend on your tax reform proposals too? Well, there's no question they play a part. Uh, right now, the money is in the budget to fund these programs, whether or not the tax proposals pass. And that's important for folks to understand uh, because tax reform is a huge lift. We def desperately need to do it and have been working on proposals for years. Uh, we're getting closer. Uh, there's a bill, House Bill 6, uh, that's going to roll out quickly through the House process that does include some new revenues. Now, we've talked a lot with uh, tax policy wonk Representative Harper. He's a Republican. He says it makes no sense to raise taxes, as this plan would on some people, in order to pay for, the, pay for these education changes. Why is that the right thing to do? Well, I mean, certainly there's a policy question there, and it's a relevant question. Uh, I think it doesn't just raise taxes, as I mentioned. This is going to pay for a lot of key pieces, and it also diversifies our revenue stream. And I can't, you, you mentioned the oil and gas, and we're, we're fortunate to be in kind of at the top end of the roller coaster. And we've been on this oil and gas roller coaster. What's super scary is 45% of our budget now is coming from oil and gas. And so we desperately need to diversify. It's step one, it's a multi-year process. The key thing for me is making sure that we can go in front of Judge Singleton in April when she's gonna have a hearing and we can show her the results that have happened in this session. Senator Kernan, as an educator, what are you trying to achieve this session for students in your district and around the state? I'm going to start with around the state because, as you know, we are responding to the uh, Yazzie Martinez lawsuit, and I think it's very important to respond to that in an appropriate and uh, way that's going to be lasting. In other words, when we talk about the money that we put into education, we have to know that it's going to be sustainable can't put a big chunk of money in now and then find out in a couple of years that we're not going to be able to sustain that. And it has to be targeted. It has to be targeted to those students that are at risk according to the judge's order. And I believe we've done that successfully in Senate Bill 1. There are some issues with Senate Bill 1 that I think will be a challenge for our school districts, but I think overall it's, we're moving in the right direction. Was it difficult to come to bipartisan agreement on this? Senator Stewart and I work very well together. We don't always agree, but we have a very good um, communication opportunity to, to visit, and, and I have great respect for her knowledge of education. So we did come together, and maybe there are a few things in the bill that might have done a little differently, but I think overall we're right on board together with that bill. As you mentioned, you are under pressure from the courts. 
how do you reassure the public that you're not just throwing money at the problem? Well, I think there's a great uh, piece of accountability in Senate Bill 1, so when districts decide to utilize uh, the money that we're appropriating for those um, uh, programs that are going to help the at-risk students, they're going to have to be accountable to that. I, the only thing that I worry about, uh, some of the requirements are going to make districts think long and hard about whether they want to go in that direction. And I hope that they will do so because I think in the end it's really going to help our at-risk students. But I do think the challenge is how are we going to do that within a district. Dr. Garcia, what do your schools, Santa Fe Public Schools, need the most right now? Well, in order to implement any kind of program or have a quality program, I need to have a qualified teacher in every classroom. So whether we extend the school year or provide more services to our kids, if I don't have certified teachers in the classroom, I'm starting at ground zero. And so we have to increase the salaries for our teachers and be able to retain them. So that's, that's number one. That's key, is having a qualified teacher in every classroom. And Santa Fe Public Schools is no different than the rest of the state with a teacher shortage. So that's one. I think, secondly, our students need more access to social workers and counselors, uh, school nurses. Um, we have a tremendous high level of poverty in the Santa Fe Public Schools. And so many of our children um, come to us with adverse childhood experiences which impacts their ability to really focus and learn. So how will this plan help you address some of those challenges? So I think there's a number of ways. Uh, first of all, I am pleased to see the salary increases for the three tiers, uh, 40, uh, 50, and 60. However, as a plaintiff district, we were advocating for 45, 55, 65. I know that this plan has a phase-in, but I've seen phase-ins fall through uh, in the past, we were going to phase in pre-K, and we still haven't completed that, and that was back in 2005. So I'm always leery of uh, phase-in approaches for particularly things that require appropriations.